Hi everybody, this is Radhika Iyengar along with my colleague Hain Shin. Uh, this is our one of the series of the Eco Ambassadors uh, interviews that we are doing. Um, this one is live, so we have actually a lot of Eco Ambassadors with us, which is super exciting. Um, but there are two objectives of the Eco Ambassador program. I think it's important to mention that uh, the first one is. Uh, training on science and the use of science for day-to-day decision-making. So how can we use science to inform our day-to-day decisions? Uh, so that's the first objective. And so learning about science and using it to make sure that our lifestyles are more sustainable. And the second objective is uh, eco-activism, which is basically, it's not just for ourselves to know and believe um, what science has told us about um, the environment and the climate related changes, but it's also as a moral responsibility so that we can also inform others and form a collective movement on how we can make our um, behaviors and uh, make our activities more environmental, environment friendly. So that's the eco activism part. So today we have a very special guest with us and they both do science as well as eco-activism. So it's great, a great combination for us to hear from. We'll hear from Min Kim, who is from the Lawrenceville School, uh, is a junior and we'll be talking about the Eco Brick Initiative. So welcome uh, Min. And then we have Matthias Joy uh, from Northern Valley Old Tappan School, High School. He's a uh, founder of e salvage and then we have ryan cho who's from kuwait uh, rosemary school and is the regional director of e salvage so fantastic to hear from this group about their uh, eco initiatives and it's great that we'll be able to uh, you know hear from them get inspired and see what we can do in our lives and hopefully be as great as our um, as the presentations today. Hi, my name is Min Kim. I'm a junior at the Lawrenceville School in New Jersey. And I'm very happy to join the Eco Ambassador discussions. Um, today, I, I'll be presenting um, my case study on eco design for sustainability, um, especially on the Eco Brick project that I researched on in the Dominican Republic and my further projectiles inspired by it. So, this summer, I conducted a case study on eco design and sustainability at the Mariposa Center of Girls in Puerto Plata, the Dominican Republic. Located in Cabarete, Puerto Plata, the Mariposa Center for Girls is a supplementary education center run by the Mariposa DR Foundation. They educate girls in the local environment with a mission to end generational poverty through providing education to local girls who do not have access to um, uh, gender and environmental education. So conducting my case study, I got to learn about the environmental activism class in the Mariposa Center. This newly designed class for 15 and 16-year-old Mariposa girls focuses on the sustainability of the communal environment. The activism class has been conducting weekly lagoon cleaning sessions, research projects on plastic bag use, and data collection on pollution of local streams. In addition to these local environmental projects, the class launched an eco brick construction, which I conducted the case study on. So, eco bricks are units of plastic bottles tightly filled with non decomposable waste, which is uh, which um, is most likely to be plastic. Um, it's a form of sequestering plastic waste, especially toxic plastic waste um, from nature and especially marine um, environments. It's similar to the concept of carbon sequestering in that we gather um, unusable, unreusable plastic that, is, that wastes our environment and that we stuff them into these plastic bottles very tightly and use them as uh, re reconstructive um, models. So there have, there's been many successful models of eco-designing. Uh, there are multiple su success examples in Africa um, and they've been proven as a sustainable building material. They're long lasting, they're sturdy and more affordable than most construction materials. This is a video of the institution called Parlay. They work on um, eliminating ocean plastic worldwide and they've done a uh, plastic cleansing 
project um, in Santo Domingo, the, the uh, capital city of the Dominican Republic. So this video shows how serious the plastic pollution is in the Dominican Republic, especially um, in the marine environments due to poor infrastructure and um, lack of education. The sustainability project in the DR, the eco brick structure construction happened during January um, until February this year. It was a solution for the local community's plastic waste pollution. Um, it was conducted by the Mariposa girls in the um, environmental activism class. Uh, through the project, they collect the entire local community collected more than 5,000 eco brick bottles, which converts to more than five tons of pl toxic plastic waste which would have been um, remaining in the local area if they weren't collected. Um, about 10,000 pesos were given to the local community um, in total um, because uh, the Maricosa Center um, rewarded uh, local citizens who would bring um, Eagle Brick bottles, uh, 20 pesos per bottle, um, as a, as a reward for their um, contribution. And it, it shaped the image um, of not only environmental sustainability, but also economic sustainability by shaping, um, by benefiting uh, the local citizens, um, by securing environmental sustainability and benefiting the eco uh, economy. Based on this research that I conducted, this year, I will be designing more eco-friendly and sustainable project. Um, for example, such as incorporating art to benefit economic and environmental sustainability uh, in countries with less developed waste infrastructure system. And um, big example is the Dominican Republic. I'll be designing more efficient tools for environmental activism class for their paddle board lagoon cleaning sessions. And I will also be um, supporting sustainability by continuing my production um, in visual arts with themes of sustainability. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Min. Uh, we'll open up um, to questions, but maybe I can just start with my, my first question is, first is what kind of got you first attracted to this initiative and um, what kind of brought you to your design? So initially I had some experience in the Dominican Republic. Um, because I went on a service trip in ninth grade to the Dominican Republic and I wanted to continue that. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to look at um, girls' education in the Dominican Republic based on my experience on a different um, organization uh, in a different region in the Dominican Republic. And when I arrived at the uh, Mariposa Center, the eco construction structure um, struck me very hard as in, I was very inspired by what they were doing in the center with um, sustainability. Uh, they were managing their own compost. They had, a, they had another um, eco-friendly construction in progress. And I thought this would be um, very interesting to dive deep into. And as it sounds like the community itself was already very active in eco-friendly practices, but um, with the way that you have kind of implemented this and wanting to take this further, um, what has been, what has the receptivity been like at the community level? Have they been receptive? So I've been, I've interviewed um, many members of the Mariposa Center. Um, from very, very young Mariposa girls all the way to um, girls in the environmental activism class. I've been asking them what, what they know about the eco brick construction project and what they think of it, what they think um, the impact would be. And the responses that came were very surprising in that they were they're mostly, and I think they were all very positive, and very supportive and even the youngest girls that I've interviewed they knew what this process um, was about they were much in, they were very much involved in it right. and many of the and the girls in the Mariposa Center they weren't driven by the economical um, 
advantages that they were given, they were they were, they were rather driven by the environmental um, mm, okay. advantages that they would see in the long term. Right. Right. So committed more to the cause rather than thinking about what benefits it could bring. Yes. Um, there were, so I heard stories about um, other local members being involved in this project for the economical rewards mm -hmm. and how they could start their own business um, using the money that they owned, um, they earned from um, this project and by collecting eco bricks. Mm -hmm. um, They're very interesting to hear. And through this, I think they, and the entire concept of environmental sustainability um, attained a, a positive connotation mm -hmm. through um, tying this to other types of rewards that were more visible and more short-term. Mm. Thank you for that. Um, we'll, we can also open up for a few other questions for those of you on the call. Do you guys have questions for Min? I see another uh, eco brick. Those are examples of eco bricks. Eco bricks can come in all sizes and shapes. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're basically yeah. any type of plastic bottle just filled very, very densely and packed with plastic waste. Yeah, that's fabulous. Wonderful. What and so while you're, uh, we'll read the eco brick uh, presentation again after the call. And uh, so just wanted to let you know that I really appreciated that uh, you were paying people to uh, use, right? So I think that this element of making sustainability also economically sustainable for people in that area is so important. And you were able to think of that. So that is a very good thing because otherwise sustainability is for the, for the rich, for the first world, it is inconvenient. For the third world, it is uh, expensive. And so we have to beat this uh, gap on both fronts. And so here we are talking to people in the first world, trying to make sustainability as convenient as possible. And we're trying to tell them the new name of convenience has to change. And in the third world and in places where, you know, people are uh, economically impoverished, to get sustainability to them, you have to dangle the economic carrot. And you were able to do that. So I think that was very commendable, certainly. Thank you. Yeah. Can I just um, jump in to clarify a, a few things? And I, I mean, Min, I think you should clarify if, if you want, but um, I just wanted to explain that um, Min actually studied what was going on at the center. So she's not the one who actually paid the people to do it. She examined how the community worked together to really build a, if you look at um, slide seven, um there's a, you'll see that this fort was made for the community and it was very interesting to us because i've also volunteered at the mariposa foundation for several years and it's just very interesting how they were able to really get the community work all together to build this um, yes, pavilion. Yeah, that's what they called it. Yeah, so they actually built something for the community using plastic waste, which we thought was amazing. So what Min did was she examined, you know, the community project that um, was completed here because it was very unique to us, at least. And um, but to Min, Min is a fabulous artist. So what she's thinking of is she wants to think of ideas for other communities on how they can also figure out maybe like a community project that has a little bit more to do with design. Um, so, so I just wanted to clarify that we didn't want to take credits for, you know, paying these people for bringing in plastic waste. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you for that. Yeah, thanks, Mel. I think it was a fascinating uh, presentation. Just, um, I guess, two questions from my end. First is this idea of sustainability. Um, was, do you think this idea of sustainability, the concept of sustainability is there in, uh, in, in DR or was it much more on like waste reduction 
uh, you know, because sustainability is much broader and there are a lot of different, you know, a lot of literature on what does sustainability mean, what does sustainable development mean. Um, so when you had your discussions with the community, do you think that they were discussing about sustainability or were they discussing about plastic waste reduction and or maybe doing something with, you know, plastic? So what is your opinion on that? So I think the um, Mariposa Center, the community um, of the Mariposa Center, they were very much into the entire concept of economic sustainability, I mean, environmental sustainability. They not only um, conducted or did this eco-brick structure construction, but they, all, they were also um, managing their own compost they, were, they had their own um, little farm, which they got uh, a lot of their food from. Mm -hmm. um, there was a cafe um, in partnership with the Mariposa Center um, called Cabaret de Coffee, and they uh, would use the uh, leftover ingredients and leftover food to the community um, to seek uh, economic sustainability and environmental sustainability by uh, reducing food waste um, they gave uh, their waste from coffee beans to local farms. Um, so the community itself, the Mariposa community, um, they're very much invested into, I believe, the entire concept of environmental sustainability. I think they were trying to advertise and they were trying to promote um, their idea of environmental sustainability to the broader community, to the broader Puerto Plata region. Mm -hmm. by incorporating this to economic sustainability um, and giving them an opening, giving them um, an easier experience into diving into environmental sustainability. Fantastic. Um, and my other question is more personal. Uh, based on this work that you did, um, are you thinking you know, uh, in terms of your own career perspectives, are you thinking that you will be focusing on sustainability? I know it's very early to say this, but has it given you some ideas? Do you want to follow this line or do you think that it's so difficult that maybe some other, you know, option would be much better? Or do you think that there may be specific aspects uh, uh, of your work that are very, um, that have been very um, close to your heart, for example, maybe working with the community itself, or maybe coming up with this design, and you mentioned one of your PowerPoints had art in it, so maybe you want to focus on the art side of sustainability. Any ideas that you want to pursue um, you know, in your future work? Well, living, I've been to many countries, um, and I live in both Korea and in America. Um, I've been seeing people um, not really conscious of how much um, water and how much plastic they were wasting because they could so easily um, obtain those. Um, and so I'm thinking of um, just bringing, starting from bringing awareness to the community that I, I'm um, part of so that they become aware of um, the environmental impacts that they cause through simply um, deciding to use a uh, single use plastic bottle instead of carrying around their own water bottles and so on. Um, I would try to um, incorporate this concept of environmental sustainability into my own life and promote it in a uh, more relatable sense in that I would approach my friends as in, I'm doing this because I'm, I know what would happen. I've been sharing my experiences with uh, many of my friends. I've been talking about, um, about my experience in the Dominican Republic and how it was like. And I definitely see myself um, somewhere in promoting this in, you know, in a career sense or even in just um, the daily life. Great, I mean, thank you. I think Radhika's um, internet might have, uh, she, her, her screen might be frozen. So okay. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. 
So um, maybe now we can revisit questions later, but maybe we can move to the to the next presentation. Matthias and Ryan. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Matthias Choi, uh, and I'm a 10th grader at Northern Valley Regional High School at Old Japan in New Jersey. And I'm the founder, founder of eSalvage, um, which we started in spring of 2019. And basically, the purpose of our company or educational website is to uh, educate the community about the benefits of recycling, especially plat um, electronic recycling. So our goal is to inform the, and educate the public about electronic recycling. And um, we want to lead by example. So, and uh, from each different region in the United States, we want to contextualize each situation and basically try to implement a solution and uh, awareness to the whole entire uh, problem of electronic uh, waste. And so we want to influence others to take action. So basically, um, the reason why electronic recycling is so important is because that the materials that can be found within these electronic devices are, um, for example, electronics, uh, they have metals in them. Um, I know some, a lot of electronics have gold, silver, a lot of valuable metals, and a lot of these uh, metals, they go into waste. And also not only that, they have harmful chemicals too that can be released into the environment. And more importantly, they have a lot of uh, plastic. So a high density of um, these electronic materials, they have a lot of plastic surrounding them, plastic inside of them. And if they're not disposed correctly, um, they could end up causing uh, harm to the environment and uh, causing harm to the ecosystem as well. So what we specifically do is that um, we try to inform the community about the recycling centers in our area. So if you look to the side on the right side, you can see all these TVs um, on the street. So um, partially because, uh, partially the reason why we started, I, I started this uh, organization was because I've been driving around or my dad's been, we've been driving around, my family's been driving around and I've been seeing a lot of these uh, TVs, uh, broken computers, just like being laid out on people's house, in front of people's houses. And I realized that um, it's not really, they don't get this, they don't get recycled per se. Um, they just get directly thrown into like waste disposal lands. And I realized also that we had a, my town especially had a recycling center, a local recycling center, where there's a specific bin um, for electronic recycling. Um, so we made, we, I brought up, I came up with the idea that we could get these electronic uh, materials, these devices that are discarded and basically deliver them to these uh, recycling centers. So. Basically, uh, we have a website that um, where you could contact us, and we have a link. We have a link, a list of information on what you could recycle, uh, the the harms of what's inside these uh, devices, and and the small taking the small steps. Uh, we're we're just trying to uh, do things that not many people think of. So again, like picking up these uh, devices and uh, uh, just like delivering them to. Uh, recycling centers. So hi, my name is Ryan Cho. Um, I go to Cho Rosemary Hall, which is located in Wallingford, Connecticut, and I'm a junior there. So uh, I am the East Coast Regional Director, and we also have we have uh, Kyle, who's also um, part of our team. He's he's the West Coast Regional Director. The whole point of why we have regional directors is because. We want to be representatives for eSalvage, but also um, give people guidance. Like if someone doesn't really know what the entire process of um, e-recycling is, we could, you know, they could reach out to us and we could help them out a bit. So we just want to be some sort of guidance figure to some people who might need help. So this is kind of adding on to the goals we had in the previous slides. So first, we have a threefold approach um, to inform and educate. So what we want to do in the future is to develop the website that we have right now and also to explore ways to measure the impact that we're having. Um, right now, our website has some, you know, some basic information about why we should e we sh why we should recycle electronics and like how you could do it. But what we want to do in the future is kind of build our website so it becomes kind of like a resource that people can refer to later on if they want to find more um, information about what we're doing. And also we want to explore ways to measure impact and you know whether that means you know surveys or anything else um, we just want to see how you know the impact that we're making in terms of like you know the amount of e-recycling that's going on 
And we also want to lead by example. Um, this kind of ties into what the uh, regional manager, regional directors do. We want to like set guidelines that people can follow and also act as, you know, local leaders, like I said before, um, act as kind of a figure that people can rely on whenever they need help with, um, with e-recycling. And lastly, we want to inspire further action um, by, you know, means of advocacy, advocacy work or writing letters to the city council or slash the mayor. Um, I know that my state, Connecticut, we have a lot of e-recycling centers, I think around like 160. Um, but then we, like the state itself isn't really promoting e-recycling as, as like something viable that people should be doing. And it tends to, it tends to be the same case for a lot of other states too. Like I know for New York, especially in New York City, there are some e-recycling centers, but they're also like really inaccessible and not a lot of people know about it. Most people tend to just throw away electronics and we don't want that to happen. So we want to inspire people who are recycling. We, we want to inspire people to, you know, spread the word and tell other people to start recycling. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for the presentation. Again, I'll um, open, open up for other questions as well. Um, but, you know, I think when it comes to recycling, just as you mentioned, sometimes it's just people don't have the right information or don't really know how to do it correctly. So I think you're tackling the education part of it, but also the convenience end of it, making it available. Um, for everyone so you know this is a fantastic initiative and i think it's amazing that um you guys just got together and thought you saw a need and then you just started um doing it my first question is for your website and for your current work and as you're doing the pickup and delivery um system how are you kind of getting your name out there is it through your school network or your families how has that been um so right now we're like very like we just started this whole entire initiative like um we started it was very recently when we started to like pick up these um discarded devices on these streets um so as of now we're still trying to figure out like how to like get outreach uh we had an idea that um we could actually put an ad in or especially in terms of where i live i could put an ad in like uh the local newspaper saying mm -hmm. that we we pick up we deliver or not deliver but we pick up and we could uh drop it off to um, the local recycling center. So we're still working on that, but for now we're um, thinking of just taking the small steps and just doing a little bit work uh, of the work on our own. And just, if there's any like uh, any discarded items <laughs> and just, um, dispose it at the recycling centers. Yeah. And that's great. And I think this kind of um, kind of network, now that you are in touch with us too, you know, we can now also share through our Eco Ambassador program and through our website as well. As you develop more flyers and materials, we'd be happy to do that. Um, and then um, my second question is, as you are observing kind of people throwing electronics, or maybe you've observed them trying to recycle, but maybe not doing it correctly, have you seen any common mistakes that people make when it comes to either receiving or disposing of electronics? Um, well, to be honest with you, I haven't really seen a person actually recycle electronic material. Like, I think that's the problem. Like, no one's actually doing it. So, um, I guess, yeah, to answer your question, I really haven't seen a person actually recycle their own electronics. So, that's what we're trying to tackle right now. Right. Yeah. Like, it's just, I feel like it's mainly just about like misinformation or like the lack of information about it. Right. So it's like the main reason why people don't even think about doing it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe even for some people who would like to, they don't even know where they should be going. Or, right. Yeah, not having enough information. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I think you guys are really closing in on a gap that there is when it comes to this. So that's great. I will now open it up for any other questions. Yeah, I just I don't have a, this is Sonal here. I don't have a question, but I just have a comment uh, that uh, this is really very relevant. Uh, I myself has have only been able to recycle electronics through some organized initiatives at my workplace, and that too is only because they've been spreading information, sending us reminders, or maybe occasionally at stores when I saw a sign. I I'm trying to remember where I saw, but I think I saw a sign at staples and a target that you can 
recycle uh, some sort of electronic device here or i don't know if you count batteries that's not electronic but for example that's also something that a lot of places will take on my work life as a sip so definitely this is probably not as um, available to people as the common other recycling things and i think i really uh, uh give a lot of credit to you guys for bringing this up because it's one of prob- the probably not so well thought or neglected areas of recycling so thank you for that thank you thanks anali we are all um, in the- i have a comment uh so yeah he's not uh people have started becoming more aware about um recycling their electronics because we went to the mall once And, yeah, we went to the Livingston Mall, and we saw that they had set up um, a kiosk. Um, so instead of just throwing away your old phone, you could take it to the kiosk, and it'll like see how much it is worth, and then you can sell it from there. So you can make, and the electronic will be recycled. Uh, I just want to chip in real quick. So yeah. Um, I've noticed that there's a lot a lot of those uh types of initiatives where you could basically give in your device and uh or your in this case your cellular device and um get money in return. Um that's also that's that's a good thing too because it's a, a spreading awareness for recycling the actual devices and you have like a economic um you have a monetary return. Um and that's we do that too but <laughs> we don't like offer like money back but we um how we do um take the bigger devices that you may not be able to actually uh take to these like recycling mm-hmm. centers to like trade in, trade in um so i say a big part of our initiative our program is that we uh we try to take those the, the bigger devices too like the big televisions that no one really wants to like like try to like carry on their own so yeah we're um trying to work with like the bigger products the the bigger devices that may have more more amounts of chemicals more amounts of uh plastic that may be more harmful and take them to the uh recycling centers right my question is around um, uh you know for plastic the recycling varies from community cut to community as far as i know because sometimes our community only takes 2 and 5 and 1 i think the numbers so similarly for um for uh, electronic goods is there a standardized protocol in terms of what can be recycled and does it vary from one place to the other because yeah. the information and information will also you know will have to be customized to the place or can it be like a generic guideline that you can provide um yeah so from what we already know um the 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 guidelines to what you could actually recycle um in different places there's uh, each like if you look on your local towns or your local region's website for a recycling center they provide a like a list of like what you could actually recycle so if you go through the guidelines there um some some of these uh websites and uh, communities they actually give you like a an outline to like what uh what devices they take and like to what extent how big you could um uh drop off to these uh recycling centers um in terms of our own our 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 program um in terms of like what we could deliver what we could uh pick up it's on on our website we have a a list of like the devices right now so we range from uh small cellular devices to we do uh TVs like flat screen TVs and uh mm-hmm. yeah it's very very useful and i myself have i have some land phones with me land lines and i don't know what to do with it so this is actually going to the right audience i will at least go to your website and see what uh, we can do and uh, you know how and so the need is a lot so i you know i think this I, this is really commendable that you have come up with this particular uh, initiative and i hope that you have a lot of success in it because it's definitely something that we can all benefit from Thank you. And Radhika, I think you touched on a very valid point that um Ryan and Matthias and Kyle have kind of been, you know, putting their heads together to really figure out what would be like good 
standard and guideline for the public because the policies in recycling electronics or whatever recycling policies is so different depending on which city you're in. Um, I know, for example, like even even close to my town, one city, they only have um, they do they do recycling pickup once a week, and then uh, the other city next to us, they only pick up recycling every two weeks. So there are things like that that can really make it very inconvenient for people um, for people to you know recycle in general, but because most people are not really aware of what they can recycle and what they can't. Um, and how, because that's so different in each um, city that you're in, uh, it makes it really challenging for them to think about what would be like a general guideline for everyone. And that's one of the reasons why they decided to have a regional director because one of the things that they're brainstorming and sorry guys I feel like I'm giving away all your next steps but they're thinking about coming up with their kind of having people apply to become an e-salvage ambassador in their city so that they can each kind of contextualize the policies in their towns and I don't know what would be the best way to do that and we're all trying to figure out you know how to do this, um, but it's very complicated. And you brought up a very valid point. It's very, very complicated. It's, you know, um, you know I just want to make this, that. This idea of having a citywide or, you know, e salvage ambassadors, I think is a great idea, Sue. Mm -hmm. uh, because I feel that along with recycling, it's also activism. You'll have to like present mm -hmm. your case to the township committees and mm -hmm. get, you know, a lot of traction and educate people and go to all the, you know, a community based events. And so I definitely feel that there is a bigger umbrella that, uh, you know, Ryan and Matthias have been able to um, have and under that umbrella, which gives a lot of support and under that umbrella, people can ask for a lot of things like you know give me right. a car for this give me this give me that what about this lot of local issues and so i think the information will become even more richer if it is uh grounds up and you'll have side by side nuances which will make a very interesting um you know approach uh, to this so it's already going in the right direction they have regional directors and you know regional uh, ambassadors so I think it's definitely that's uh, that could definitely give you a lot of richness in terms of the context and the local issues as well as how to resolve it uh, on in practice as well as in policy so mm -hmm. it goes to you know uh, for the students to be thinking about it and it it is unbelievable that you guys are probably half like not more than like more than half my age <laughs> You have come up with all these amazing ideas and I feel that I can learn so much from you. This has just been so fascinating and I think uh, we definitely need to continue these discussions and send us your material so that uh, we can put it up on our, you know, ED for SD website uh, so that others can see what an amazing one part of it is. Um, you know, your work, the other part is that you guys are so young and you have been able to accomplish so much. I think that's something that is uh, remarkable, which I just wanted to you know, point out. Thank you. Great job, guys.